talk about politics for a little while. Haven't done that in a while. I do like my green screen background. It's actually a, a green wall look. Black painted wall, green. Here's my desk. What up? When I was like 16, 15, we used to hang out over at Taco Bell. We'd ride our bikes over there up Graham Road. And we'd hang out like me and Connor and Ryan, Charles, you know, like get the gang together. We could talk about science and like, you know, theoretical physics and politics. These are, those are my two favorite topics because if you can master both of those, good God, that's like Tony Stark becoming president, which would be pretty sweet. And I was always like, yeah, dude, I'm running for president one day. That's my plan. I'm going to become president and uh, fix every, that'll fix everything. Cause then I just got to show people like the right ways and then they'll just do it. Cause that's how it works. You just suggest a solution and people immediately grab on, grasp it and, and utilize it. And, and it's not actually the way it works. You get, you tend to experience resistance. I found out as the years progress, just cause you have the right answer. If someone else doesn't understand it, they may resist it. The right answer, the correct, the correct, or, or a good idea may get resistance if it's not well understood. Or, um, or if it, you know, causes an emotional response, because sometimes, you know, the truth hurts for some people, if it means you got to change. And so as the years went on, I was like, yeah, president, president, politics, politics. And um, it's somewhere along the way, I kind of realized I didn't really want to be involved in politics so much, but that I would prefer to fix the system that what we think of as politics functions on. I started studying the French Revolution, which is incredible. If you have never studied the French Revolution, it's time now to start studying it. And there's this guy named Robespierre, who was like this orator. You know, he was like a talker, came in, a politician. And they were like down with the monarchy, down with the monarchy, and his buddy Danton. They were like down with the monarchy, let's start a revolution. So these two guys, in conjunction with a few other people, um, which the names elude me at the moment, but basically, you know, started the revolution and went deep. And Robespierre started to go crazy. As the year, I don't know how long it, it was progressing, how long that they were really like pushing it. Um, the Montagnards, Montenar I think was the name of their, their political party. And I promise you that I'll be bringing in experts and people that know this stuff as well as or better than I do so that I can actually deliver cogent thematic responsible response says but anyway robespierre went crazy he started to think that he was god like he really took it too far they they had this giant this well firstly they started executing people so first thing if you're going to start a revolution right now if you want to start a revolution with me right now what we're not going to do is get a guillotine and put it in the middle of the town and bang the drums every day and march people to the guillotine that we think are villains politically like we're not going to persecute a race or a class uh, because I've seen that fail during Nazi Germany and during the French Revolution. Uh, so Robespierre and Danton were responsible for all these beheadings. Like every day, they bang the drums in Paris and they had this giant guillotine in the center of Paris and they'd march people down and just murder like, I don't know how many hundreds of people a day, just, just cut their heads off. And apparently when a head gets beheaded, it still has oxygen in it. And is like, so they'd cut the head off and the guy pull it up and show everyone. And you'd see the face like, as the person was realizing they didn't have a body and that was it. Then they die slowly. Their face just like contorts and it's like chicken with a head cut off muscular. And maybe they're still conscious a little bit like, oh my God, what's happening? I, I can, I can, I, and then it's just like nothing. So they would hold it up and they, the crowd would see it. And they'd be like, yeah, give me the blood. Give me the sick fucking shit but this is like what 150 years ago and um so robespierre went crazy slowly became this this megalomaniac and um thought that he was the one that was going to lead the people to freedom and turned on his buddy dan tom who was basically the the loud boisterous friendly one of the group and uh robespierre turned on him during, during this chaos, you know, once you get a taste for blood and you start executing people, you'll start to see traitors in your midst. You'll start to see the evil in your family, even when there may be none, because if you're bringing it in, then you're going to see it everywhere you look. If you surround yourself with evil people, there's a chance that you're going to start to see evil where it's, you know, it doesn't have to be there. 
or projecting it onto other people and stuff. And so Danton was sent to trial and, and said in the trial, I would, however it was translated, he was saying, I, oh, I would rather be a poor farmer than to meddle in the politics of man. Like the, his whole life, he'd wanted, he'd been a politic, wanted to be in politics, politician, and got involved in the power struggle of politics and got executed at like 29 years old or something stupid, like really young, this, this brilliant, good, you know, for what, from what I can tell, this guy was like kind of the heart and the soul of the French revolution. And, you know, the French is a fucking reason why the United States exists. If you study the American revolution at all, they had nothing. The French gave a bunch of weapons and then blockaded and destroyed the British Navy so that Cornwall, Cornwallis surrendered. The, the British would have annihilated the Americans if the French didn't get involved. The French are wholly responsible for the American country in existence today. Statue of Liberty was a gift from France. And man, when Danton, when I read that, that Danton screened that out, that really resonated with me because I've realized lately it's like a power. You don't want to, I don't want to grab the power, like the title and be like, now I got it. Now everyone bow, get on your knees. That's not what I, that's not the, a sustainable way to change the future. You know, the hope that you win the popularity contest so that now you get to command everybody. Some you random douche now gets to command everybody. But that what you really want to do is help change the system itself. And you do that by like introducing new technology. At least that's one really potent way to do it. You know, Steve Jobs has done that really well. Um, Bitcoin, cryptocurrencies, altering the system in a way you could argue that it's political, but it's like beyond politics. So getting into the, the technology and free software and building like a voting online database where we can vote online on the blockchain, that would be a way better political move than to try to run for president with a rigged voting system. Uh, there, I, I don't know if you've seen, there's an article um, about a guy in, in Florida who was tasked with flip, like making voting machines that would flip. Uh, so that's kind of where I'm at right now. And then I guess looking down, you know, I'm going to stop it there because I have some more thoughts about the, the left and the right. If you know these phrases and I'm going to get into that right now. Sorry, people were knocking on the door just then. So I got a little distracted, but I'll be coming right back at you. Stay tuned for my...